Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bipolar Awakenings podcast with me, Sean Blackwell. And today I wanted to do something a little bit different, a little bit uh, out of the box, you might say, and do a little comment on some current events. I know everybody's heard about the Will Smith slap by now, but it's an issue that's been sort of gnawing at me for a couple of weeks. And part of me was like, don't do a take on Will Smith. But then there was a certain kind of history there and some implications regarding psychology and spirituality that I thought might be interesting to explore a little bit in the podcast format. And so I thought I'd bring it to you guys. And if you like it, please let me know. And if you don't and tell me, you know, stay in my lane, I will, you know. But um, here, anyways, here it goes. I thought I had something uh, a little bit different to share. And to start, Will Smith. <clears throat> you know, when you, you have celebrities, you know, around, when you, you, you sort of know celebrities, you have a kind of relationship with them, but they don't have a relationship with you, right? And the thing about Will Smith was, I never really liked Will Smith. And not because he slapped Chris Rock or anything like that, but, you know, I got to know him in the late 80s through his rap music, which I actually thought was pretty terrible. I mean, anybody who is a fan of hip hop, I mean, Will Smith compared to Eric B. and Rick Kim, Big Daddy Kane, Public Enemy, um, you know, forget it, right? I mean, he was almost like a joke. You'd hear him on the radio, but you'd never hear him in the club. And so when I got to see that he got his own TV show, Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I was really surprised. Uh, I can remember that. And then, again, his TV show for me was, eh, you know, his... I tuned in once in a while to watch Carlton, I think, but his character wasn't memorable for me. Like I was a big Seinfeld fan and I've been watching Seinfeld on Netflix again. And I can remember lines from just about every Seinfeld show that's ever been made that I've ever seen. I can't remember a single line um, or anything from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air other than the Carlton dance. And so then when he became a movie star, I was just floored. I was like, Will Smith, the movie star? And he was a big hit, you know. I went through his 10 biggest movies, his 10 biggest grossing movies in, in, on the internet, doing research for this little talk of ours, because I couldn't figure out why he had become so successful, you know. And it turned out that I have paid to see one Will Smith movie ever. And that was Independence Day, where he was really, I mean, he wasn't, he was the star, but I mean, I was there to see the aliens, you know what I mean? So, you know, not really a big Will Smith fan. I had found him to be kind of fake, phony. He was the cool, fun guy that just, I didn't find him believable. I'd see him on Letterman sometimes, Date Late Show with David Letterman. He struck me as phony, or Senior Hall, one phony talking to another, you know, it just, didn't work for me, you know. However, as he matured, got into maybe his late 30s or early 40s, he did make a few movies that I went, oh, well, that's a little bit different. That's a little more personal, a little more real. Uh, he made one where he was a guy who became a Wall Street broker and he started out selling x-ray machines, which was pretty good. Still didn't pay to go see it, but it was pretty good. Um, but anyways, and that was it, you know. But... Then when I heard that he came out with this book, Will, and it was like he went from just being a little bit more personal to just completely venting about his childhood, his life, telling really, really personal stuff. And it turns out that this guy had this highly traumatized life with an abusive father who beat his mother. So citing The Guardian uh, here, and I'll read this straight from them, Smith wrote that it wasn't only violence that traumatized him, but his own inaction in the face of it. So, quote from the book, Within everything that I've done since then, the awards and accolades, the spotlights, the attention, the characters, and the laughs, there's been a subtle string of apologies to my mother for my inaction that day, for failing her in the moment, for failing to stand up to my father, for being a coward. And then he continues, what you have come to understand as, quote, Will Smith, unquote, the alien annihilating MC, the bigger than life movie star, is largely a construction, 
a carefully crafted and honed character designed to protect myself, to hide myself from the world, to hide the coward. And when I read that, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like all, well, most actors, I think, with perhaps the exceptions of the really great ones like Christian Bale, are largely phony, you know? They've got a big persona that they project into the world. They've got their brand that they want to get out there and they want to show people a particular image of themselves. And in my opinion, Will Smith was the worst for that. And that's why he was so uninteresting to me. But now all of a sudden he's just admitting the whole thing. Like he's, he's just showing the whole game here. I could not believe it when I read that quote. And so then all of a sudden his story got quite interesting to me. And, you know, later on, I was learning that he was going very public with his marriage issues, talking about the open relationship that he had, had this interview, you know, with his wife, Jada, where she's defending her, what does she call it? Entanglement with a friend of her son's. And all of that made me think, okay, so hang on here. So we go from this totally phony guy to this guy who's completely airing all of his dirty laundry for the entire world to see. Um, I just felt like, dude, you went too far here. You're overcompensating for everything that you've hidden for the phone you've been for 20 years. You're just way overcompensating here. Relax, you know? And, you know, I'm not a big fan, obviously, but I pick this stuff up. You know, I'm on YouTube. I watch the internet. I'm in, I kind of know about these things to a certain degree. So then now that takes us to Oscar night, right? And, Okay, so I want you to imagine yourself, right? You've got this fragile marriage that the whole world knows about. You're in the front row. You're one of the most world-famous faces the world knows. This comedian comes up, Chris Rock, who I love, and who's always been very transparent about his life and his everybody hates Chris comedy. I think Chris Rock is a pr pretty transparent and interesting guy. And Chris Rock, you know, he steps on a landmine. He makes a bald joke. He didn't realize Jada had an illness related to that. And honestly, it was a terrible joke. It was just an old joke, you know. And we all know what happened, right? So Will goes up, gives the slap, and, and you know, it becomes a slap heard around the world. And then what came out of that? I mean, a lot of people, I think most people judged him really harshly, you know. Uh, a lot of talk about toxic masculinity. I mean, we get a lot of that these days. But some people went even further. I mean, Howard Stern and Joe Rogan questioned his mental health. You know, Stern thought he was mentally ill. Uh, Joe Rogan thought he was delusional. You know, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had an interesting take on it. He thought that Will Smith fell into the black stereotype of being the wildly impulsive uh, Negro to be quite honest, who cannot control their emotions. I mean, this is a stereotype that has gone back for, for you know, centuries, you know, this kind of idea, right? And then other people thought it was fake. And I think maybe the most interesting take was from professional wrestlers, retired wrestlers, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, um, because they thought it was fake because they said to themselves, look, if I was really angry and I really wanted to defend my wife, I'm going to punch that guy. And I thought they made an interesting point, which I'll get to in a few minutes, okay? Because he didn't punch, he slapped. When I saw Will do what he did, I saw myself. And the thing is, you know, in the New York Times, they had a, a profile on the whole thing. And they referred to that slap as like a Rorschach test. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But the idea of the Rorschach test it's a, this ink blot, and then whatever you see in that ink blot reflects more about you than it does about them. Okay. Now, how could I possibly see myself in that moment? Well, what I saw was a guy who was not impulsive. He was not impulsive. Because to be impulsive, like the wrestlers were saying, if a if a man was truly angry at another man for def and, and insulted and humiliated his wife. An impulsive act would have been to run up on stage and just deck him. That would have been the move. You know, Will, he walked up there methodically and he slapped this guy. I've been there. I had a situation about 15 years ago where 
we had a president of our condominium association. He was an older man. I think he was in his 70s. And my wife and I strongly suspected that he was corrupt. And here in Brazil, it's unfortunately a common thing. We thought he was basically stealing money from our condominium association. He was making a lot of questionable investments and renovations and things. He was never letting anybody else see the uh, payments that he was making. He was doing it with his friends. It was all very shady. And my wife started to push him a little bit, asking to see the books for the condominium, basically the accounting, with the implication that we didn't really trust what was going on. Well, there was one particular night, and this, this went on for a couple of years. There was one particular night where, where I came home and my wife was in our apartment crying. Um, and from what I understood, he had humiliated her again in a particular meeting, you know. And I was just furious with this guy. And, and so many people in the building were like, oh, he does a good job. He does a good job. And I was just, I was really, I was really getting um, worked up, you know. And the next time I saw this guy, uh, I went into the elevator um, after seeing him in, in, in the lobby, I went into the elevator. It wasn't in the lobby. It was in an area between two buildings outside. But I got in the elevator and I was just so mad. I went back out and he was talking to two workers and I went back out and I walked over there. I didn't run, didn't punch this guy, but I pushed him and I pushed him up against the wall and I grabbed his face, you know, and I told him, I said, you like humiliating women, not my woman, you son of a bitch. And then I told him, and you can tell that I'm still pissed with this guy. Right. Um, and I told him he was corrupt to his face. I was just completely furious. All this was in Portuguese, by the way. I was completely furious. So the workers sort of pulled me away from him. And when I got to my room that night, I realized that I had made a mistake. You know, I had, I had made a mistake that I shouldn't have pushed this guy, uh, that there would be implications. But the bigger part was that, you know, that I was still angry. You know? And so... When I see what Will did, it reminded me of that situation where a man can get into a situation where he just feels like, you know what, I'm going to make my point and the hell with the implications, but it's not impulsive. I thought about what I was doing. I had thought about it for days before, and then the emotion came. Now, there's another aspect to this from my own experience, which is that I had been to a Kundalini um, a Vipassana meditation about three months earlier. And after that, my emotions of all kinds were stronger than they would normally be in these, in these uh, variety of situations. My sadness would come up feeling more sad. My anger was more angry. And I think that the fact that I had actually become more raw after the kundalini awakening that had happened during that vipassana meditation, um, and you can look that up. I've I've um, made some videos on this kundalini process that started during my vipassana meditation retreat. Because I got more active, I was more emotional, but I was thinking about what I was doing. And I look at Will Smith, a guy who's been phony his entire career, and then... I just see a guy in that moment whose emotions are more raw, just the way mine were. And then he just made a decision like, not today. I am not taking this joke today. The hell with the consequences, you know, because I think he would know what was coming. You know, I, I would have th thought he would know what possibly could have arisen out of that. You know? And so here's my point. The first point I want to make is that the Fresh Prince would not have slapped Chris Rock. That guy does not slap Chris Rock. He is too worried about his image. He's too worried about what other people think. He's just trying to get himself out there and be successful. He would have smiled and just taken that joke. I am absolutely sure of that. And then one of the funny things that came up, which I just read yesterday, was that DJ J Jazzy Jeff, one of Will Smith's oldest friends, he was on the show, he was his DJ when he was a rapper, he was quoted as saying something to the effect of, I've been with Will in 50 situations where he should have slapped somebody and he didn't, you know. And that's exactly what I was thinking. It was like, 
he's taken a lot of shit being this smiling, happy rapper dude, you know, and, um, and he, and he just couldn't take it anymore. And he basically owned up to that in his speech. He started talking about as we're public figures, we need to take a lot of criticism, a lot of criticism from people, jokes, and we need to sit there. And I think he said, we need to sit there and smile and take it. And it was like, that was it. And then he, and then he started to talk about how through the movie making, he, he needed with his, the movie that he won the Oscar, um, he realized that he needed to become more of a protector, a protector of his family, a protector of his wife, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm sure that was running through his mind, you know. And from that perspective, I just see him as a guy who knew what he was doing, but decided to do it anyways and the hell with the implications. He was seeking justice. And that's what I was seeking. I was seeking justice. By the way, I realized I did the wrong thing. I, I He did charge me and I ended up having to do four days of community service, but I didn't get a criminal record. So I'm cool with that. I never should have pushed the guy. Um, and that was the end of that, you know, on my end. But it gave me a, a perspective on what Wool was doing that um, I had some sense of compassion for where he was at because I could really understand where he was coming from. You know, I'll put it that way. With the exception that the president of the Condominium Association that I pushed, he was cor corrupt. Uh, that was ultimately proven, and he was basically thrown out on his face in humiliation, which he wholeheartedly deserved. Chris Rock didn't deserve that at all. He just didn't know about this um, disease situation that Jada has, and I'm sure if he did, he wouldn't have made the joke. Now, should Will be punished? Absolutely. I think he should be punished. I thought I should be punished. And, you know, he got this 10 years without going to the Oscars. I mean, I've been banned from the Oscars my whole life. You know what I mean? I can't go to the Oscars, so it doesn't seem like a big punishment to me. I could have understood if they wanted to take away his Oscar. I mean, it was a really embarrassing thing. But even more so, I think that what Will did might actually expedite the death of the Oscars. I mean, really expedite the death. And in, in a bigger picture, even expedite the idea of Hollywood and this is something that Russell Brand brought up. And normally I think Russell's a crank. But um, in this case, I thought he had a point. Because to start with, he was like, why are we making movie making a competition? Why are we giving trophies to people for these uh, movies? You know, it, it's kind of, it feels like something from the past to a certain degree. And I think what he's getting at is that in the past, movie stars were literal stars. I mean, they were stars in heaven, you know, and people went to the movies for escapism to get away from these things. And celebrities, they're our heroes. You know, they have been our heroes. They are people who are, who have been portrayed as being qualitatively better than we are. But in that moment, when Will Smith slapped Chris, he revealed a dark side a human side, a vulnerability that has never been seen. And in that moment, I think that there are a lot of people who could look at the big star, Will Smith, and go, wow, this guy's just a regular guy, you know. And the moment we start to think of our celebrities as just regular people, Hollywood is over and the Oscars are over. You know, it's 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 over for that whole genre, that whole culture. And and it is dying to a certain degree. I mean, the best movie, uh the, the movie for best picture this year was Coda. Have you seen Coda? It was a nice little movie, but come on, best picture of the year. It certainly wasn't anything from Martin Scorsese, you know. Um and so I think that perhaps Russell Brand has a point that as we're awakening, as this sort of spiritual awakening is under is coming about, as we're getting in touch with all aspects of ourselves, then we stop projecting the positive points onto stars. You know, we stop we stop seeing the greatness in stars and and find a little bit about of that greatness in ourselves and realize that these celebrities are just like us. They're just doing a different profession, you know. And I found Russell Brand's take on that really interesting. And the whole thing I found, I found very interesting, culturally very interesting. 
so many different takes on this thing, just like the New York Times said, the Rorschach test. And, um, and so that's why, you know, even though there are bigger issues in the world, like the war in Ukraine, I did find it quite interesting. And, and perhaps this is part of the spiritual awakening, you know, having to take in greater complexity, having to realize that our heroes are not so heroic, having to find the heroic side of ourselves and stand up for that. I think that all of that is is part of an awakening. And, and I think I see a little bit of that there. And I'm glad I wasn't the only one. So, Russell, if you're out there, thank you. Uh, a little lighter on the conspiracy theories, please. But uh, you got it right this time around.